Today, I'll be showing you the behind the scenes install of the Van Life Tech Radiant Heat Flooring System, never before allowed to be recorded or posted online. Their system is so high tech and advanced to their competitors that if you purchase it, you actually have to sign an NDA. But today, for the first time ever, they're allowing someone to show the install process. So buckle up because you won't see this anywhere else. I know what you're thinking. What am I, a van lifer, doing in a hotel? What a fraud. Here in Bend, Oregon, it gets down to about 15 degrees every night, and my van is basically completely empty. And even worse than that, it's missing any sort of heating system right now. Last week, I did a video on budget heating hacks, but if you watch that video, I talk a lot about how those become costly quickly and can take up so much time and energy. So prioritizing a heating system is at the top of my list. And because this is my dream van build, we aren't settling for anything less than the best system out there. But that's not the only reason I'm in a hotel. After just three short days of being back on the road, I got physically sick, but I'm also sick of sleeping on the cold, hard ground. Yes, the cold hard ground. And it has been, let's say, some trouble. <laughs> and that is why, ladies and gentlemen, today we're tearing out my floor. Girl, you are getting way ahead of yourself. All right, all right, fine. Let's go back to the beginning. Three years ago, I lived in my converted van for six months in northern Vermont when it would get down to like negative 20, negative 30, and my Webasto heater just never made it through the night. I would wake up and I wouldn't be able to feel my hands or my fingers. I would just be numb and it was awful. I remember one day waking up and looking at the thermostat inside the van and seeing that I had been sleeping in negative four degrees. And after that winter, I swore I was like, I'm done with winter van life, never again. But then a really great van builder friend of mine told me about- Radiant hydronic heat flooring. Yeah, what she said. And how it is absolutely revolutionizing how people are heating their vans. It heats your van in a completely different way. And I'm going to walk you through all those different details and how it works today while we install it in my new van. I'll be working with Van Life Tech, a company that's really just taking leaps and bounds with how they're heating their vans and really it's actually from their owner who actually lives in a van and saw a gap and saw a need and you know when you i think when people live in a van they really understand what you need as a van lifer and that's what i love about companies like van life tech i have so many friends who have this floor who have raving reviews so i have no doubts it's going to be incredible i mean i wouldn't drive across the country 15 hour drives every day for three days for anything less. Oh, that's why your posture is so bad. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> So just a little heads up, what I'm doing in this video is not the exact DIY that everyone else would do to install this system. Because I already installed my floor, and usually the system would go directly onto the metal, but there is no way I'm able to pull off the marine adhesive I attached the supports with. So we're keeping it, and I am losing the half inch, but it is completely worth it to me. Hilariously, they reached out to me about collaborating the day after I installed my floor. And those who've been watching my channel for a while know this was my dream van build upgrade. So I am beyond okay with ripping this up. But just remember when you watch this, it's not the complete usual install process. Think of it this way. The usual install is the King Loki variant, all right? Everything is perfect and polished, directly attached to the floor. But I am doing the Kid Loki variant because I have to kill my Thor floor. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> so today I am very thankful to be in the Van Life Tech Shop working on the first half of the install. This will be a two-part video series and in part two I'll be working directly with Troy Holland, the owner of Van Life Tech. He has been in this business for a very long time. Many, many years ago, he was a commercial and residential radiant heating designs and system installer. And at the time, he also lived in a van and loved traveling into very cold weather. And he saw a gap and a need for better heating and van builds. And so he came up with a system in Van Life Tech, and now he does more than just van builds. He's even creating systems for companies located in Antarctica. This is all super important to me because if I'm being maybe a little harsh or too honest, sometimes van builders and these companies aren't certified or have professional experience and what they're selling or doing. And when it comes to systems like this, lack of professional training can lead to serious issues and risks. But we'll get more into DIY versus professional heated floors later on. 
But for now, let's get started on this install, shall we? So for the Van Life Tech Systems, they are the only complete kit available on the market, meaning they include everything you will need to do the install besides two gallons of distilled water. They include drill bits, a roller, a carbon monoxide detector, specialty tools, adhesive, fittings, fasteners, everything, you name it. So when you get your kit, you don't need to worry about any hidden costs or having to spend extra money after the initial purchase, unlike with other systems. So what you're looking at right now is a sample of all of the layers that go into the floor. And to break this down even further, here is a label diagram. And again, just a reminder, this typically is applied straight onto the metal, but I physically can't remove my supports and we're just placing it on top. So basically I'm going to have the most insulated floor that has ever existed in a van. <laughs> right now we are starting on the bottom layer, which is the puzzle piece structural insulated subfloor. This is the only structural insulated floor system on the market. And this floor also has sound deadening qualities. So another great added perk. Plus, these pieces we're attaching now contain polyiso, which acts as a wonderful thermal break. The install is usually as simple as sanding the metal floor ridges, cleaning the metal, then applying the included adhesive to attach one puzzle piece at a time. And while I do this step of the build, I thought we could actually backtrack for just a moment and go over what is radiant hydronic heat flooring. So these systems pump hot fluid from a boiler through tubing that is under the floor that then radiates heat upward. Then that warms everything it touches and radiates throughout the room. So unlike a Wabasto or other forced air heaters, it doesn't just heat the air, but everything in the area. An air heater blows out air at an extreme heat. Then that air rises to the top of the van and sheds and loses heat and then drops back down as it cools. This is why with an air heater, the floor of your van is almost too cold to touch in the winter. Plus with radiant heat, if you were to open your door in winter, the warmth would remain instead of rushing all out because you're heating more than just the air. And when you touch a cabinet or an object in your van, the radiant heat also heats those things as well, which is a plus for keeping your water tanks from freezing or your electrical devices from dangerous temperatures. So you may now be thinking to yourself, hmm, do I want a forced air heater or do I want radiant heat flooring? So let's go over some of the pros and cons, but wait until the end of the list because I have a crazy plot twist about the van life tech system compared to the other heated floors that will make your decision real easy. So let's start with the pros of heated floors. The heating is more energy efficient than an air heater as well as provides better heating. The radiant heating has a reduced sound from the air heater and improved air quality. It's more eco-friendly and has a longer lifespan. Plus, the Van Life Tech System is a three-in-one system, so it functions to heat not only your floors and your air, but also your hot water for your showers and sinks. So a really awesome thing is if you're adding together the cost of this system, remember that you're also including the price of building a floor and the price of the hot water system you'd want for your shower or sink. So now let's review some of the cons of the system. They do have a high initial cost, it can be slow to heat, and it does take up more room than an air heater. But if you are looking at the pros and cons of an air heater versus a radiant floor system and you can't decide, the really crazy amazing news is that with Van Life Tech, you don't actually have to choose. It's a two-stage system. So it's radiant flooring and has a fan coil unit with S-bar to heat the air while the floor rises to temperature. So you don't have to wait to be warm for the floor to get to temperature like with other systems. Plus, while a Wabasto air heater has a capability of about 14,000 BTUs max, the heater in the Van Life Tech kit has a heating capacity of 23,000 BTUs, which actually triples the heating capacity of my last system, which was 7,000 BTUs. And that is all before even discussing the heating capabilities of the Radiant Hydronic Floor. So what we just added was the Radiant Barrier, which is very important as it helps reflect the heat upwards. The heat is pushed up into your van and not just going to exit out of the floor. And now it's time to move on to installing the custom Van Life Tech Plank Flooring, which is designed specifically for each van's unique shape and to capture the tubing, which I'll show you in a minute, between the planks. Think of this step as, again, like a giant puzzle. Very simple to match up the pieces and just screw them into the floor. The Van Life Tech floors are a total height of 36 millimeters or 1.4 inches. My original floor I installed was one inch. So for only 0.4 inches more, I am making so much better use of my van floor space. And I think the secret to van building is getting the most out of every square inch. While you may be just searching for the thinnest heated floor on the market, I wanna say that yes, you may save 0.4 inches or something like that, but you'll be sacrificing in other areas. Every layer Van Life Tech uses has a purpose and skipping just one could massively change the quality and performance of your heated floors. So 
So initially, when I was looking at heated floors, I was trying to find the most budget way to do them. And something that a lot of people kept bringing up to me was heated floors from Amazon. But what I learned is that they are really more like tile warmers, not heated floors. And they're not going to be efficient for your battery. Typical DIYers place them in the spots where you stand and walk, which may seem great because trust me, I remember the nights when my floors were so cold that even with slippers on, my toes were numb. But these tile warmers don't have a performance anywhere near the van life tech system. My second thought was that recently there have been some people attempting DIY radiant hydronic heat flooring systems on YouTube. And for me, these videos are all just very new and I haven't seen a single video by a professional who can guarantee that the DIY system is safe and not going to cause more harm than damage or you know hurt me. And I've heard just too many stories of people attempting electrical systems and it going badly to jump on the train of attempting something as serious and as dangerous as a heating system from a DIY YouTube video. A really important step in this is figuring out where in your design and van build to put what they call the keystone, which has to be located where you want your system to be installed. but it also is where the heater is located on the outside. This is a universal kit, meaning you can place this almost anywhere in your layout for your van. However, the transfer plate has to be located where you can also install your heater. I really like where we chose to put it better than where the exhaust for my old heater was because my old exhaust was located right next to my passenger and siding door, which was not ideal. So what you're seeing now is Troy's beginning to work on part two of the install. Let us bring the tubing out of the floor. And then we happen to work that out for the most compact install to like also send our floor transfer plate right down the middle of it, which handles all of the heater, plumbing, and wiring connections gotcha. for like the most compact install. And in a short little van, we always want it as compact as possible. That's my biggest fear is losing a finger. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's a good <laughs> And you can pull that. So while they do make kits that are 100% DIY and I could have done it all myself, I chose to do the first half DIY and go to the professionals for the install of the boiler and all of the things that are honestly much better suited for a professional. Everything I'm doing in part one of the install is pretty straightforward and clear and nothing that I can do really would create any kind of hazard. However, once we start dealing with a boiler system and drilling a giant hole in the floor of my van for the S-bar heater that reaches 23,000 BTUs, I personally know that I am not qualified for such an install. Plus, even just learning how to do it would take 30 times as long as the professionals who just install all of the time. While I love DIY and I love the sense of pride in completing a complicated project on my own, I also know when to hand things off to the professionals. I always say the electrical and the heating systems are two places you really just should ask for help with or at least have looked over by a professional to make sure your van is safe. I have seen people even with professionally built vans bring their vans to other professionals and when they see their electrical system they say a fire could have happened any day. So if professionals are out here making mistakes I am smart enough to know I am sure as heck likely to make them as well. I want that peace of mind that when I go to sleep at night in my tiny little metal box that my home and I are safe. Something else that I'm really liking about their flooring system is that you can actually purchase it in two steps. So if you're not able to buy the whole floor up front, you can actually buy just the flooring part, which is similar to what I'm DIY installing today. And then you can purchase and install the second half later on when you're ready, even after your van is fully built. So now we're moving on to the install of the tubing into the floor. And this is one of the pieces that Van Life Tech is just sweeping the competition in. They have 40% more tubing than other professional systems, which is genuinely insane. I'm sorry, let me just blow your mind again. 40% and the install process is super simple. I just tuck the tubing into each plank and capture it between the next plank and screw it into the floor. They even have pilot holes where you need to put each screw. That way you never have to worry about screwing into the tubing. And then I just repeat that same process across the floor until all of the planks are in. So as we finish up part one of the install, I wanna answer some of your commonly asked questions about the system. Number one, do you need to worry about the lines freezing in colder weather? No, you don't because the kit actually includes glycol, which when mixed with 60 40 provides protection down to negative 50 degrees. Question number two, what is the typical battery usage? In a steady state operation, the total electrical draw is four to five amps at 12 volts DC intermittently, as it does cycle on and off. 
In watts, this is about 48 to 50 watts, which is about half of any DC refrigerator on the market, which is pretty amazing. Question number three, what are the typical minimum electrical system requirements for this kit? A 12 volt DC 200 amp hour system fused at 25 amps to handle power draw during startup is really gonna handle what you need for the system. Question number four, what is the annual maintenance for the system? So for maintenance, you should operate the system for about 20 minutes per month and check glycol levels every six months. And finally, question five, does the system have a warranty? So it does have a two year warranty on professionally installed systems and a one year warranty on components on DIY installs. And there you have it. That was part one of the install of the Van Life Tech Radiant Hydronic Heat Flooring System. In part two, we'll be getting to the install of the boiler, the heater, and all of the complicated pieces, while also answering more of your questions about the Van Life Tech system. The install in part two will be 100% completed by Troy Holland, the owner of Van Life Tech, and I'm so excited for you guys to meet him more and to go more into depth on this system and how it all works. I'll see you then.